Okay, we're at the University of Montana and we're about to board one of their electric Proterra buses. It's an all electric bus. And the driver of this bus is a nice fella named Michael. And we'll get introduced to him right now. How's it looking? It looks perfect. This is Michael. He's part of the University of Montana. He's a driver for us today. Say hello, Michael. Howdy, folks. Yes. And in the back area, we have Jordan Hess. Hello. Who, and your, your, your title again, Jordan? I'm the Director of Transportation here at the University of Montana. Okay. And we have lovely Vicki with us today, and her title is what? I'm a Transit Operations Supervisor. And what's your last name, Vicki? Wreck-It-Walls. wreck, -Walls. wreck -Walls. Okay. So we're going to take a short ride on this electric bus. And I guess we're on our way to the uh, the charger. Is that our first stop? That's correct. Is that our first stop? Okay. So we'll 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 take a we'll take a quick ride with that. Okay. And that's the rear of the bus. Okay. Kind of just to move over and just maybe go over to Higgins and then come back to come back to Fifth or Fifth and then Sixth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, one of the things I forgot to mention, uh, maybe I mentioned it walking to the bus, but let me mention it now. We can't do what we're doing right now on the campus of my alma mater, which is Cornell University. We don't have any electric buses on the campus of Cornell University, and part of this project is to help Cornell get that fixed. So I'm happy to be helping Cornell with that effort. So I'll spin you around. Buses, you know, the batteries, of course, are all under floor, um, and so uh, so the wheel wells. It's got a longer wheelbase than, than a lot of buses. Um, they've, they've accommodated for that by uh, by doing independent, almost a wishbone type suspension in the front, so you, so you get a, a greater, uh, a tighter turning radius than you normally would with this wheelbase. Okay. Um, and so this bus actually turns about the same as our our 35 foot buses. Of course, okay. it's a little bigger, you know, a little bit more bus to fit in that space, but, but they turn really well and handle really well. And, and this is a 40-foot bus? That's correct. This is a 40-foot bus, okay. Now, Vicki mentioned earlier that the 40-foot bus took some additional training because many of your diesel buses are 30 or 35. Correct. We have some tight corners, and uh, we just have to train the drivers to be a nice square corner, and Mike will give us a great demonstration of this right now. Right, okay. Yeah, so Mike's taking a right turn onto you know a fairly uh, fairly tight uh, urban corner, and uh, and we've got a few places where the bus, uh, you know, where where uh, the streets are narrow and, and uh, the trees are old, and the, you know the, the, the environment is tight, um, but uh, uh, the bus handles and fits through those environments perfectly well. If you had to guess, what is the top speed? Of the top speed? speed of this bus? I think it's governed at, at 65. 65? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. 65? Is that right? Our, we have a um, contract maintenance facility that's uh, that's uh, a, a third-party truck shop, actually, that does all of our maintenance. Okay. Um, they're located about uh, about uh, nine miles away, um, so we do get up to highway speed taking the buses out there. Um, and uh, and that's, uh, you know, most of our routes are right, right within the, the city, so uh, not too common that our buses get up to highway speed, but but, uh, but when they do go to the shop, they get up at that speed. Okay. Okay. And actually, exiting on a freeway ramp is is a great, a very visual demonstration of the effectiveness of the regenerative braking. Oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's right. We didn't mention that. So this is an even tighter corner uh, that uh, that Mike navigated quite quite okay. well. Okay. All right. Hey, Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt that. No, that's okay. No, that's all right. So, Paul, we're going to come up on the chart here. We can, the, the experience is a little better off, off the bus. That's um, fine. So, I, I thought Mike could stop right before we get on the bus. Uh, right, right. What's that? We come around that left turn. Yeah, exactly. We'll get out and, yeah. and we'll do some video from out there. Again, you see, I mean, there's there's places on our route where you you've got you've got feet or inches, you know, where you, that you need to navigate. So it's it's really tight, and the and the bus fits just fine, um, and um, and the drivers adapt uh, and, and uh, really do quite well with it. Music building. So, what street did we just turn left on? That was on uh, Connell, and now we're turning left onto Maurice. Maurice. And um, we'll get out here and, and watch the charger from the from the outside. Okay. You want to let us off right about here, Mike? Yes, I will. Perfect. And then we'll walk down a little ways and I'll give you a, a signal yeah, when we're ready. Yeah. Okay. We'll be, right, we'll be right back to you, Michael. All right. Okay. So there is the charger. Now, this device, Jordan, was supplied to you by Proterra? That's correct. Okay. And just so the, the video viewers can see, you actually did a you did a, a fancy pole here. Yeah, here, here. Uh, we wanted that pole to, to fit into our campus environment a little better. So it's a it's a nice fluted pole. It's powder coated black. Uh, it matches some of our um, some of our luminaires on campus, um, and uh, is just a little bit nicer uh, in uh, nicer style for a, a campus environment. Right. 
Let's see. So there is the charger head. Is that what you call that? Charging uh -huh. station, yeah. charger head. Okay. Now the, the voltage that's coming into the campus is 12,470 volts. That's, that's correct. And then, uh, and then it, coming out of the transformer over there is um, 483 phase. Okay. Um, can we take a walk over there? Yeah. Can we uh, can we have him pull in and then and then uh, and then? Uh, either way, yes, that's fine. That's fine. And then um, I'll I'll have him go around the block and then I'll show you the um, I'll have the charge head come down without him here and you can film that as well. Okay. So, okay. So t just tell me what you, what you know. I'll I'll follow your lead. Okay. So we'll walk up so we get a better view of okay. the bus. Um, uh, actually, this manhole cover right here is about the perfect place to stand. Um, okay. So we're walking a little downstream and you can see in the background the charging head in the background along with the pole. And okay. so then we'll get now, to this location. Um, Here comes. And we'll have him uh, come on in. So what's going to happen is that um, as the bus approaches the charger, um, the uh, right about now um, the bus is going to start communicating with the charger. So now all Mike is doing is he's um, he's steering the bus, and the bus is controlling its own speed and it's controlling uh, its own uh, position relative to the charger. Now in just a moment, the charge head up on the top of the bus is going to drop down, um, and. Uh, and then there's a little chute up there that will guide the charge head into place. Okay. So now the charge head is coming down. Yep, I see the charge head. Yep. And now the bus will pull forward. Gotcha. And when Mike is in position, he'll, uh, he'll pull the parking brake. And now the bus is charging. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, he'll get a full charge in just a couple minutes. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then he'll um, be able to in, in the, Just roughly for the viewer, and, and in this short amount of time, how many miles equivalent is he putting into your route? So, so our routes are 4.4 are miles, um, okay. the, the, the route that this bus is on, I guess, on a daily basis. Okay. Um, he, he's going to come to this point every 24 minutes. So we've got two buses, so we've got a bus every 12 minutes. Okay. Um, it's, going to, uh, it's going to take him about, uh, depend, weather dependent, between two and five minutes uh, to, to, to fully charge the bus. Okay. And now one of the things you know, a lay person should note is that while Mike is off the bus, in a normal diesel scenario, he would be part of or observing someone putting fuel in the bus, whereas here it's all automated and no human is involved in actually putting energy into a transportation device like a bus. That's correct. It's all automated. And you know, if, even if he were laying over um, at, a, at a stop, uh, using the restroom or changing drivers or, or any other uh, uh, things that you might do at a layover break, um, the bus isn't idling. Um, so uh, we've got academic buildings on either side of this of this bus charger. Uh, actually to, to our left is our, our school of music and, and we've got, uh, you know, we've got practice rooms where, where students are, are playing. Um, we don't have a loud diesel bus out here idling. So there's recital rooms in There's recital building. rooms, yeah, and, and, uh, and, and to, recital halls. And to our right, to camera right, is what building? That's our College of Business. College of Business, okay. I just wanted to let you know when we pulled in, the bus was at about 75% of battery charge. Okay. So I wanted to let you know about how long it would take to get to 100, which is not that long. Gotcha. So. All right. We'll know when it does because the charge head will automatically release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The bus operates best between about 20 and eight, or about 30 and 80%. Um, and so um, if we, on a, on a cold day, we're not always getting up to 100%, but we're always topping off. Um, and we don't have range concerns because we're always charging a, a little bit throughout the day. Um, so we're, we're always replenishing back up to, to a point where we can make an, a couple more rounds of, of um, uh, at, uh, to the charger. Uh, and um, uh, we're always uh, able to, to uh, operate a full day of service. Actually, with this configuration with the fast charger, you could operate the bus 24-7 uh, because it, it, uh, it uh, regains a full charge every, uh, every time it uh, comes by here. Well, let me ask, let me ask you this, Jordan. Um, in the winter, when charging is probably a little bit slower, what's the longest the bus sits at this location well, typically? So typically we have a we have a different opening procedure in the morning. So once the batteries get up to operating temperature, it charges just like normal. Um, uh, you do have a little bit higher electricity use because you're 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 operating the cabin heat and the driver heat, uh, and so and so you're you're using more charge per round. Uh, but once the batteries are up to temperature, the charge is about is about the same amount of time. Okay. Um, what we find um, just we have a cold weather procedure since our bus are stored outside at ambient temperature uh, we have a cold weather procedure where we just um, we bring the opening drivers in a little bit earlier and they come in and they and they warm up the bus and they charge a few times before they go out into public service um, okay. and um, uh, with 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 newer electric buses um, that's that's pretty much a non-issue um, I think uh, we were one of the early adopters in the cold climate um, so we have a few uh, 
we have a few workflow pieces yeah. that you know that make it work for us. But you, you have experience with the cold weather yeah. charging, mm -hmm. and I think what I just heard is that once the battery is up to operating temperature, even in the cold weather, the st the on station the on station meeting at the charge station time becomes normalized and it's the same as as, as if you were in summertime. It's a little bit longer just because you're, you're using a little bit more power since the, since the heat is operating but uh, but it's, it still fits within our route. What's so our, our, um, our route, like I said, it's a 24 minute cycle time with uh, with either two or three buses so either either eight or ten minute headways or eight, excuse me eight or twelve minute headways. Okay. Um, and um, and uh, there's there's enough time built in where they're 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 able to uh, to make that work. I mean, it, it it'll get a little tight in in a, in the winter when you you also have more passengers in the winter. So you so you've got uh, you got more people riding the bus, uh, more time getting on and off the bus, uh, and a little bit more charging time. Um, but. Uh, but generally it works pretty well. Okay, and, and versus a diesel bus, so you, you'd use more energy for the same reasons on a diesel bus, but the actual charging in, in terms of cold weather effects on the battery, that's not affected once it's at, once the battery's at operating temperature. It's pretty, it's pretty minimal. Pretty minimal, okay, all right. And I've noticed, you know, students walking by as if for them, the sight of an electric bus being charged on your campus here at the University of Montana has become a normal site. It's absolutely normalized. It's absolutely normalized. We have uh, um, on uh, commencement weekend or on uh, family weekend, we oftentimes have students explaining to, to parents or family members uh, what's going on here and the importance of, of the electric bus and the pride in the electric bus. It it's just done charging now. So okay. We have 100%. Okay. You know, one of the things, you know, I, I, I noticed that the, the, the shuttle special sign did not change when we were charging that would be interesting to add that you know, to say in charge, in charge or yeah. something that was going on that would let people know that yeah. the reason the bus has stopped here it would be a good advertising feature <laughs> and this uh you know right now we've got this the sign uh saying special shuttle just to, to indicate that we've got our cornell guest here no. but, uh, but uh we but when the bus is in normal service it would show of course the route information and, oh and i other see information oh so. i would never have known that if you hadn't said that <laughs> well thank you very much so what we could do, we could have him pull around the corner and then we could go over and look at this. Okay. And so um, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a heads up on that.